to my channel. Yes, I am actually recording. I'm on the deck. It's Sunday afternoon. Yes, the chatterbox is here with me as well. And she started whinging. So I may end up putting a stop to this, but we'll see how we go. Yes. Merciful hour. How the Irish say it. Um, <laughs> geez Louise. Save me, please. All right, I'm okay. Sorry. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to my whipping track. Grab, grab your cuppas. My cuppa is actually empty, which is a bad idea. Starting a whipping chat when I might get thirsty, but hey. Um, I'm knitting. And this is the uh, Stephen West um, 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 shawlography. That's it. I was going to say shawl along. No, it's not a shawl along. It's so anyway. So I've got my colors here. I've got my green and my purple, and then my pink, and then my orange, and then my pink. Oh, it's more cherry. And then my purple, then my pink, then my orange, then my cherry, then my purple, um, and then. Part three is this layer here. Now these are very, very tight. I'm hoping that when it's blocked, they actually stretch and you get to see those gorgeous Vs coming out. And what I'm about to do is put the purple stripe back in and um, make those eyelet holes and then probably start a new color. So I'm gonna sew in my end or weave in my end, my weave in Stevens, um, because I keep wanting to call him Westy. I'm not actually sure if he is a Westy, but anyway, he's a West Knits. He is a Stephen West in Australia. He would be converted to a Westy. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to attempt to do this without instructions but I'm actually oh no hang on let me go back one um, because I forgot to grab my end and actually I will grab my instructions just 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 in case so what I'm doing is he's a bit of a diva look at him he's a bit of a diva um, he's awesome to watch he's such a good teacher uh, where am I uh, using color C being the purple. Uh, okie dokie. Right. So this is the shortening. This is the eyelet row. Okay. Glad I read. Okay. So one tail. Um, I'm not doing this very well. Uh, let me just get a start on this and then I'll do a proper kind of hello intro and all of that jazz. Now, yet again, because I'm out on my deck and my phone, well, my phone's not stupid, but um, it just saves um, me, I suppose. Um, what I'm doing is recording as an unlisted live. If people hop in here, <laughs> freak out. It's like, whoa, what are you doing here? Um, no, seriously. Uh, now, what do I need to do? I need... Knit four. And then, yes, okay, right. Now I'm in the right place. Okay, now it's the whole knit into the same stitch. So it's knit yarn over, knit off. And then the battle of the slip stitches and all of that kind of fun and games. Uh, that tail didn't go in very well. Okay. It could just be, I'll have to weave it in later. These are lace needles if you're interested. Um, they've actually got slightly longer tapering tips than regular. And um, they are pretty good for this kind of spiky stuff I found and I got these on my forbidden fiber project last because there was lots of funky stitches on that so I've found them to be pretty pretty good all right 
now I might start getting into the flow of things. All right. Um, okay, I got as far as grab your cuppas. Um, grab your cuppas. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Um, you're going to get a lot of random crap. <laughs> not really. You're going to get a lot of random stuff. I do um, a range of different crafts. I will do whip and chats midweek. I tend to get more floss uh, yarn fabric-y stuff these days than I do diamond painting, but I do tend to do diamond painting and uh, that kind of thing. So if you're um, interested in just, you know, this Irish chicken Tasmania jabbering and talking your ear off, then by all means, stick around. Um, and um, yes, come and join the madness. Um, Hubby is hopefully going to go out and get dinner. I've asked him for chicken, so that means I'm cooking. So hopefully I can get this done before he gets back and the chicken needs to actually be cooked and we'll go from there. Oh, I've got the orange in my bag in preparation for the next section, which is, you know, six, six rows. That's I'm recording. I'm recording. Hello. No, no. The yes. Well, the assistants are being recorded. That's okay. My assistants have a and I have a Oh, good. Oh, Thank you. bye. Um, I've been sitting out on the deck for a little while, and there is a wallaby in my neighbor's yard. Sorry, currawongs. Noisy beasties. They're like crows. They're big black birds. But they've got these white, they've got a white flash on their tail. And um, they can be a little bit malicious when it comes to cars. They can rip the rubber out of windows and um, car window s surrounds. You know, the, the bit of rubber that keeps the window in place? Yeah, they can actually rip those out. Um, pull at the windscreen wipers and stuff at the parks. Uh, yeah, yes. And they're not small, insignificant birds, uh, as you can prob probably hear. I think they're currawongs. They could be forest ravens. I'm just watching the wallaby. She had, I think it's she. I don't see any big joey in her pouch though, which could mean that she's got a little pinky, um, a really, really small one, because they generally have two on board. They've got a bigger one that's able to run around slightly independently. And then they've got one on the teat and they actually stick on the teat for their first couple of months. And then when they start getting hairy, they start getting more and more, you know, sticking their head out of the pouch and a bit more independent and stuff. So now is the time we get the joeys. Um, yeah. So speaking of wobblies, as I like to call them with Sophie. Um, I have signed up to be a wildlife carer. I'm not sure if I had done that or said that before last week's Whip and Chat. Um, so I am going to do a webinar at the end of the month and then be available. I'll have all the app working and all that kind of stuff to be able to get a call out and say, hey, we've got an animal here, can somebody go and get it? And I will have all the gear and I will be able to respond and go, pick me, pick me. So that will be cool. Um, last weekend, I think it, I shared the story of the seagull that inadvertently rescued um, on our way home. And uh, I was talking with my wildlife rescue person um, Thursday or Friday, maybe Friday, um, Friday afternoon, and we were having a bit of a laugh and she's put me in touch with the people who can get me the rescue kit all together. And um, yeah, that'd be cool. I have got an enclosure that may suit um, very, very short term rescues. Um, I think it, the mesh is small enough for most animals. Um, but 
I think they'd even still, they'd probably be okay in a pouch anyway overnight in the house, in a car carrier. And I've got plenty of pet carriers um, on the go. I have been lucky enough to use a contact to be able to get some coffee sacks. Now, there's a thing. Um, I didn't even think of this. Somebody had made a coffee sack pouch, like a project bag, and I wanted them to make me another one. And I don't know what happened, but maybe they stopped doing them or something. Anyway, it never really panned out, which was a bit disappointing. But now I've got a source of coffee sacks. I haven't actually looked at the coffee sacks, but some of them can be very, very pretty. So, um, but apparently they're very good for pouches. And if they get bloody because, you know, you might be picking up a injured animal, um, you don't want to keep the bloody or you might be exchanging um, sack for sack or whatever when you do a, a shuttle run to get an animal to rescue. Um, so one of the situations my friend was saying was that she helped do a transit from south of Hobart to Hobart and then somebody else did the next leg because the animal was destined for somewhere in the middle of the state, you know, and just coordinating that. Um, just, yeah, really cool. Now, I don't know if the coordinators are all volunteers, but I could get on board that kind of thing too. Um, yeah, so we'll wait and see. Um, I have a few more days to hear if I have been given um, a new position at work um, and all that that might entail so that would be um, interesting we'll see what happens I've got and I'm not going to dwell on work too much just sorry give me a second um, but there's a Christmas due coming up and this is probably more for my vlog than anything else you know when you have colleagues and you don't really want to spend your social time with them. Yeah, I'm kind of in that place. Um, I work with you, I don't want to play with you and I don't go out and play anyway. So why would I want to play with people who, you know, anyway, yes, moving on. I was asked this week if I had another, if I had a second job like many people who work where I work. Um, and I'm kind of going, say what? So I don't know if he knows something or... <laughs> anyway, I wasn't giving him any anything. Yeah. I said I'm a wildlife care or I'm training to do wildlife rescue. He's actually a marriage celebrant on the side. Um, so yeah. Um, other people run businesses or things like that. Now that hoot you're hearing, if it's picking it up on the camera, that is actually um, our local transport museum steam train. Uh, we must take Sophie down there one day. Um, we've been talking about trains. She loves playing with her wooden trains and we've, Marcus is kind of going, oh, there's no trains in Tassie. It's like, there's a transport museum just down the road um, that operates I think most Sundays or one particular Sunday and I seem to remember hearing it last week as well but so I'm not sure but it works on weekends it's volunteers or whatever and it's um just a turntable-y kind of layout um yeah which is kind of cool um he was saying he was on the ooh, last um last passenger train service in Hobart before it closed and then became freight line only and it is now gone and um, it now starts at Brighton which is over the river um, and he was saying like he's got a family friend that had a miniature train track on their property um, I know of a couple actually who've had miniature train tracks I know one across the river um, that I think may have belonged to my friend's folks or their neighbor, maybe. Um, 
but you can go along their fence line and see the I did go on a train trip um, down near Port Arthur. There used to be a train down there as well, a little steam train on the most rickety tracks. Scared the bejesus out of us. Uh, yeah, back when I was doing touristy things. Um, so that's cool. Now hopefully the wind is not too buffety. I really hope my mic floof um, keeps a dull roar on that. Um, so if it's too windy, I do apologize. I will try and work on volume um, in editing. I think the wallaby's gone back under the trees. Like you, you've heard me talk about this before, that the wallabies stay under the trees. And um, yeah, that's where she is. Um, and there was a bunch of them, as I say, that come over to my neighbor's house and um, come up and eat the grass. It's all kinds of cool. Um, I did want to record during the week um, after work, uh, the bird song was just incredible here. It was amazing. And I don't know what the heck the birds were. I thought it was a blackbird and then thought, mm, it's a bit too melodious for a blackbird. Maybe it's natives. And I do not know the native bird song well enough. But there's all kinds of sparrows chirping, which I recognize. And then there's some other pretty melodious twittering too. Um, yes. And then there's the roar of cars. Big old vintage car went up the hill earlier. Um, which is kind of cool. Noisy old thing with these old wooden spokes in this... Actually, I was going to say dirty green colour. The actual the green that's on my scarf. That kind of... I don't know. Drab. Um, blue bottle kind of green um, or even green bottle glass kind of color. I don't know if that would have been original color and I don't know what the car was. Um, I don't know if, yeah, it was puke green a thing. Not a pretty color. I thought most of them were black or cream or something. A friend of mine, a uh, friend of mine at the time, he's not anymore, but um, what am I doing? Uh, knit. knit. Um, he restored vintage cars and most of his were black, but then he also did wedding and funeral services, so yeah, he had a, a vintage hearse. Um, yes. Anyway, people and stories. Um, I don't know what I was going to chatter with you about. Um, I've got the wool for another project from Stephen Westnitz. Uh, Stephen West. Um, it's the Hibernitz, Hibernit Along, which is the December project. Um, I think that starts 26th of November. Um, and I know I probably should be crocheting. Um, what have I done? So, knit, yarn over. Knit, maybe I've, do, yeah, I've, okay. I've got an extra stitch down there. I'm gonna have to keep an eye on when I go through it. Um, yeah, I've got one more week of work and then I'm on leave. Woohoo! Cannot wait. No plans. Just sleep in. Not have to worry about work. Sophie will regularly say to me, do you have to work? Which is killing me. Um, because, you know, because work has been stressful. I'm kind of going, I don't want to go to work. And then Sophie kind of saying, 
Oh, do you have to go to work? You know, is like, oh, yeah. It's hard. It's hard, put it that way. I mean, I'm glad I'm not putting her into daycare and sort of costing me a fortune and all of that kind of stuff, but, you know, she's home, she's with Marcus, um, that kind of thing, but, yeah. It's hard being a full-time working parent. Um, but needs must, as they say. And the blackbirds here are noisy. They actually know their warning song. Um, I think I was saying before, um, blackbirds have to be taught the warning. Um, when they fly. Oops. Um. Now for those, ooh, I have gone into something a bit wrong there. For those who care, and I'm sorry, I'm not meaning that you don't care, but, um, my back has been playing up again. Not happy about that. Uh, trying to keep on top of physio and meds and that kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, it's been a bit of a pain. Oh, what am I doing? I need to knit this stitch. Goodness me. Um, yeah, that's been a bit of a drag. So, um, yeah, I've been dealing with that. It takes at least half an hour in the morning um, for the pain meds to kick in. Well, it takes half an hour for pain meds to kick in, period. But half an hour in the morning, so the first half hour I'm moving around, I'm sore. Hubby actually threw me into the bath this morning. The heat certainly helped, but by the time I was out of the bath, the pain meds had also kicked in too, so... Um, it probably would be better if I go and sit in the hot pool in the swimming pool. Um, but yeah, it's just getting around to it. I can't do it on Monday because I've got commitments, meetings and that kind of stuff. I don't think, but maybe Tuesday if it's still playing up. I could go um, and do that. Um, just from the point, ooh, point of view of if you want to do this stitching, it's quite tight. I don't know if that's just my tension or the way it is. Um, Westy seems like he's quite tight in his stitches too. I'll be much more happy when I get to an actual fingering color, which would be that dark green. This is not all fingering weight yarn, if you're into wool at all. Um, this is a mix of fingering and double, which could be my downfall, but ah, it's an experiment. Let's see how we go. Um, yeah. Now, I got a notification in the mail, in, in my email yesterday, Friday, maybe? It would be maybe for Friday. Black Needle Society box is going to be on its way. I might not get it in time for the retreat. Uh, if there's a retreat, I must actually check that out. Um, I think there is, because it's a murder one. Um... And I have, hmm, yeah, I'm going to have to message them because there isn't a Facebook group that I'm attached with yet. And, yeah, it will be all kinds of cool um, to get involved. Um, the Facebook groups have been so good. Now, I've made the mistake of 
uh, not checking my bank account when the payment was due to go out, so I, my subscription fell off. So frustrated. Um, and um, I missed out, so I got kicked off the subscription list, but I've been able to get the individual boxes, so now I'm waiting on the wait list to get the subscription boxes again. Um, was very happy that I didn't get the Halloween box, but there was some amazing stuff in the Halloween box, like some seriously amazing stuff. Um, so it's just, I'm not into the extra, you know, skulls, crossbone kind of thing. I don't know, I don't know why. Um, there was, what was it? Somebody in one of the cross-stitch groups had done a Day of the Dead tribute using one of my stitching company's patterns, possibly Autumn Lane Stitchery, um, maybe even the Halloween box pattern. And she had made the Day of the Dead alter you know, remembering family. Now, the only thing I've ever really known about the Day of the Dead, in Ireland, we call it All Saints Day, the day after Halloween, November 1st. Um, the only thing I've ever known about the Day of the Dead is the movie. I can't remember the name of it. Um, where the kid... Oh, why did the, something happen to the kid? He died. Or he went and followed something. And then he had to be remembered uh, to come back to life or something. And it turned out his father was a musician. And the guy he thought he was his father was a douchebag. And anyway, the main premise, I suppose, that I'm getting at is that it's a day of remembering the dead um, and a day of honouring family and that kind of thing. Now, I never liked the sugar skulls, never liked the whole skeleton kind of thing but that is my link I suppose to what the Day of the Dead is all about but it's a really cool way of celebrating people who have gone before so there's a few um, I don't know bits of folklore I suppose that as long as you remember the dead they're always alive so I guess we remember the fallen generations kind of thing if for want of a better kind of term so I remember my mum. I don't remember my grandparents because they were dead when I was born, before I was born. I think I've only got one grandparent who saw me because <coughs> my parents are much older anyway. But, um, you know, it's like I'm getting to the age where mum died. So maybe that's why I'm thinking of her more. I don't know. Um, Dad is still alive. So he's 93, so hopefully I have as much longevity. But there's that whole kind of thing that, you know, if people live on in your memories, they're still alive. They still live. Um, and I think that's really, really cool. I think it's it's precious. Um, I, you know, I hurt because my kids aren't as close as I would like them to be. Um, and, um, you know, I kind of let them live their own lives. Um, you know, uh, but because I have been, um, emotionally abused, I guess, gaslit in some respects, um, and I'm not going to dwell on this too much either. That's more a story for the vlog, which is on Patreon. Um, 
I don't keep in touch with my family as much as I would like and you know I don't have that incidental chatter that I was telling a friend about and I do miss I miss the hang time I miss the hanging that I had you know with my kids you know with my people um I missed it with the stepkids because they didn't get the concept um yeah that kind of thing um anyway it is what it is I suppose I have some regrets um and I don't know do I I don't know if I'm making up for it with Sophie I don't think I am I'm doing the same old same old with Sophie that I do with my own kids I think Marcus helps me chill on it, things a little bit more than I might otherwise have reacted with that's the warning sound of a blackbird very hard to describe it no pterodactyls flying around the cockatoos um, they are so weird. They have the most raucous screech. Um, yeah. But that wind is picking up. Which might mean that the buffeting is quite loud. I apologise. Um, I'm tired. I think it's probably half my problem. I'm tired and I don't have a cup of tea. My eyes are tired. I think, yes, my eyes are tired. I'm, I'm, yes. I don't think I slept too well. Anyhow. And I'm concentrating. Shh. Um, yeah, it's not a straightforward knit this row. The next row is easier because the next row is all pearls. And there's 189 stitches in this baby. So it's not a small insignificant row. Hey, I, oops, I found my old shawl and, 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 get this, I didn't realise it, but I had actually put the shawl onto circular needles, so I caught all the stitches. Whether or not I get around to actually stitching it remains to be seen, but at least it's on needles. Um, yeah. Too many projects, not enough time, seriously. Um, I haven't finished, it's the 7th, okay, I'm being a bit hard on myself. I haven't finished Cloud's Factory um, hang on. I haven't finished Cloud's Factory. There is no Planet B that dropped for me on the 2nd. I know, five days, and I'm beating myself up over it. It's stupid, isn't it? Um, I have finished the two birds, um, some kind of blue macaw. I think it's got a better name than a blue macaw. If it's a macaw, it's a parrot. And a forest owl. No, sorry, a forest owlet. Now the thing is, it's also got the words Planet B, which I'm part way through, let's just say. I don't even know that I'm a third of the way through the Planet B word. Um, but it's obviously going to say there is no Planet B across the top. 
And what we're up to, it would seem, is all the flying birds that are endangered, which is all kinds of cool. So this part had two, um, two birds and the, the words. So the next part will probably have two birds and, a wor and there is no. Um, to finish it off, it's been a year and it looks awesome. One of the girls in the group finished theirs, did more backstitching on theirs than was prescribed, let's say. And it looks amazing. The backstitch really, really makes it pop on certain places. So she's she's basically backstitched everything. So she's backstitched the belly of the whale, the um, garadil, the little alligatory thing. Um, she's just backstitched all kinds of contrasty bits. And it looks awesome. I'm so impressed and I'm going to steal her ideas. Tough. Um, I might use my own colors. It's not like, you know, it's forbidden, verboten even. Um, verboten even. I don't know that Germany's got an F. No? Oh, I don't know. Hmm. Anyway, moving on. Um, and, um, yeah, I'll probably finish it off with the backstitching and, um, just make a couple of bits of them pop that little bit more um, and uh, yeah I think that's gonna look cool um, if you are a cross stitcher and I know a lot of the diamond painters are drifting into cross stitch um, thread stash I would recommend it's pretty good I remember I was saying that I had well if you remember I was using a, an app called stash cash and it crashed on me and I can't get it to recover. Well, I started using thread stash instead. Now, when I put everything into stash cash, I had to enter it in manually. And one day it took me like four hours, seriously. Well, the idea of another four hours of doing thread stash was just beyond ridiculous. Well, guess what? It didn't take me four hours because all the threads are pre-entered. It took me, I don't know, it felt like an hour doing it. It was a pleasure to enter stuff into and it was much, much quicker. So yes, I'm very happy with some of the aspects of thread stash. Now I did actually pay to upgrade it to premium. That was an extra $2.99. I've got $20 in my Google Play account because um, I get free money for doing Google um, surveys. Just take the stitches. Not yes. Um, so I have earned money that's ended up paying for apps. Uh, thank you very much for coming. Uh, some of them are boring and repetitive. Have you been to college? What is your salary? Uh, you know, um, but some of them are like to do with shopping. Did you visit this store? I apologize for the buffeting. Uh, yes or no? Um, that's going to be a bit noisy. Um, do you have a receipt? Would you like to take a photo? Yes, no. Um, that kind of thing. But it's free money. Sometimes you get 10 cents and sometimes you, uh, what's the most I got? I don't know, maybe 52 cents was one last week. Um, I think I've got up to 90 cents just for, you know, a couple of tick and flicks. Um, some of the repetitive questions were, were um, do you have children? What ages are they? Um, and that kind of stuff. Are you married, single or otherwise? Um, yeah, I don't care. Um, uh, Google knows it anyway. Google's listening, aren't you, Google? Ooh. Ooh. Marcus is home with the chook. If he even remembered me saying, get a chook. I'm disappointed. 
I'm coming to the end. Yes, it is, Sam. At the end of season 16 on binge on NCIS. And I have no more seasons left on binge. I don't know where I'm going to get season 17. Um, I've got other NCISs to um, binge on, but, 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 games and anything, everything. Like, what am I going to do without my peoples? I really enjoy that. What you get? Nothing for you. Nothing for me. Nope. Are you doing? You. Tried calling you to give you a heads up, but no. So you're making dinner? Oh. Oh. So I've got a lamb. Okay. I'm happy to cook that. Nope. Right. So the pop ups when I was recording was him. Oh well. I didn't tell him I was recording. Oi. <laughs> We have a fight, this child and I, <laughs> over my beanbag. <laughs> she has a blue fit when I take it out of her room. I mean, a blue fit. Stop it. And she's happy when I put it back under her bed. Okay, please stop. Oh, you bastard. Sophie, I'll hang you by your ankle upside down. Is the wallaby still there? Um. Distraction. Um. <sighs> okay. Obnoxious behaviour, Sophie, is not going to get tolerated. No, it is a bit cold out. Yes, it's really super cold. Mm, and you've got a big thick cardigan on. Jacket. Yes. Mm. I need to go inside now. I might, it's a bit windy, and I'm afraid of people's poor ears being blown off. I think that we need to go inside right now. Well, maybe. I'd have to finish off inside. And put my... My bean bag. Yeah, I'd have to tidy everything up and put the bean bag away. In my cave? Yeah, in your cave. <laughs> yes. Oops. Under my bed. <laughs> Under your... Oop. Ooh, yeah. I don't like your glasses, bud. Thank you, Sophie. And I did like oh. your flower glasses. Mm. But these are like flower glasses. Okay, let me finish this row and then I'll come inside. Yes. But uh, I don't know what the temperature is today. Huh? I don't know how warm it is today it doesn't feel very warm probably warm in the sunshine but the breeze is quite cool um it's not warm tomorrow it's, it's 18 degrees hey please stop and i know it's getting chilly over in the states people are saying it's something like 20 degrees which is your 20 degrees as in fahrenheit and not my 20 degrees which is celsius which i think is up in the 60s 70s maybe the 70s um, yes. Anyway, nearly finished. Oh, you're going inside. Hmm. Oh, you're going inside, and I want to go inside. <laughs> oh, one thing we're working on her with is her enunciation. Can you say pajamas? Pajamas. She used to say pajamas. 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 She can't say yellow though, can you? Can you say yellow? Um, I can't. I say 
blue and white. <laughs> it says blue and white. Oh, she's a turkey. Yeah, I'm ready. Oops. Yeah, you're ready. You're ready, buddy. <laughs> oh, what happened there? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Mitch, yeah. yarn over. And then you're going to the butt laden. <laughs> but you're laden in the cork of the south. Now, hang on. Where am I? I'm here. So the last four stitches, knit one and slip three. Oh, oh knit one, yarn in front, yeah. and slip three. Okay. Two. So. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. All right, I'm going to push that down a bit and, and show you in close up. So I've got two bars here, and those um, purple stitches come down, and they will spread into little V's in those eyelets as it opens. That's the theory, anyway. So. The next row is mostly pearl, and oh, sorry, I'm just getting my needle ends, my stoppers, um, for safety. Mom, you're going inside the now. Yeah, I'm going to say goodbye to people bye for a bye. few minutes, because um, it's too short a video for you. So I'll jump back on somewhere inside and wrap it all up, and um, yeah, do all of that. Okay. Um, bye. Bye. Um, see you in a minute. <coughs> well, actually, I was going to say I've been listening to NCIS New Orleans. This is just wrapping up the end of the niche with me. Well, I was going to say, well, hey, howdy, hey, without sounding weird. But all I'm thinking of is Woody and whoever it is on NCIS New Orleans that has that very much... Alabama drawl like Nana. It's very, very weird. Um, I just wanted to wrap up the video because it was all a bit chaotic out on the deck. Um, with Sophie, I was getting cold, it was getting windy, she was getting more fractious, and it was just like, okay, time to wrap it up. So, hey, um, I think I came in and knitted some more. I think I'm up to finishing Oh, no, I don't know where I'm at. I'm not going to go and pick it up. Anyway, I have passed wherever I was. Um, I have finished uh, There Is No Planet B, my cross stitch. I've been doing that. It's Monday evening, so when was I doing that? I was doing that uh, sometime on Saturday. And then sometime on Sunday, and then I was left with 570-odd stitches tonight, all the white. Um, I can't believe I've actually done, like, 570-odd stitches tonight. It was only one colour left, and it was basically the outline of all of the letters in Planet B, those words. So I was a bit worried that the white would kind of blend in with the background colour a bit too much. It may be okay. I may need to go around the outlines. Um, I'll see how I go. After seeing the girl in the group who has added her back stitch to bits, it's like, oh, it really pops. Really, really pops. Um, back stitch does that. Um, there's a couple of people who have, oh, I think it was Shalene. Um, she showed a picture of her Christmas gnome. Maybe it was a gnome without backstitch, and then with backstitch, uh, Sambri Stitches on Instagram did a gingerbread man snow scene without backstitch, and then with backstitch. Now it's not a brilliant piece or anything that's showing backstitch to its best. To see backstitch to its best would be like checking out Bothy threads. Uh, Bothy or Durian Jones 
both Bothy and Durian Jones as a designer kind of creator um, have a lot of backstitch in their work and it really makes the bland background and then the backstitch ink pen finish just bring the whole image out and you kind of go how did you get that out of that because it was just like a mess of color beforehand so yeah backstitch can really be amazing um yeah um so i'm finished there is no planet b i have no time pressure on me from a cross stitch point of view for the rest of the week until saturday and it's just the knitting and the crochet to keep on with um and the back i mean and the other stitchy projects which i really need to get on top of like finishing the dark queen of the sea but anyway that's all for the yarny kind of stuff this isn't a floss tube or anything this was very much a knit along so i'm gonna wrap it up say goodbye thank you for joining me and um i will see you around on the tubes bye for now may the road rise up to meet you may the wind be always at your back may the sun shine warm upon your face and the rain fall soft upon your fields and until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. <laughs>